up as the tailback. Reese swings it out. Ball is knocked away. On the run, and he's going to come up short. Oh! The box from the 30-yard line. And the slant is caught. Oh! Williams 40. For Cincinnati. Palmer intercepted. Taking it down the sideline, out across the 25. Massive hits are part of the game when it comes to the NFL, yet even when you know that, they can still shock you. Kiko Alonso takes Flacco's head off. The first hit that we have to talk about involves Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens. No, Flacco doesn't lay this hit, though that really would have been a shocking moment in history. Instead, Flacco is going up against the Miami Dolphins and gets flushed out of the pocket. He doesn't panic and finds a lane to run for the first down and inch closer to the end zone. He goes to slide and Dolphins linebacker Kiko Alonso blows Flacco up. The hit was so unnecessary, so late, and so brutal, it popped Flacco's helmet clean off his head and began rolling down the field. Meanwhile, Flacco looked visibly dazed and injured straight away. Hits like this not only shock everybody watching at home, but also the other players on the field. Flacco's teammates were furious at the late hit, and a massive scuffle began right next to where Flacco was blown up. Even if you think Flacco slid late, nobody could have anticipated a hit like this was coming. Reggie Bush popped by Sheldon Brown The next hit that we're going to look at is the time Reggie Bush was absolutely destroyed by Sheldon Brown. It was just the opening drive of a game between the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles. Quarterback Drew Brees had moved it down the field a little bit already and attempted to throw a check down to Reggie out of the backfield to keep some momentum going. Brees had to loft it up higher than he would have liked due to pressure in his face, and Bush was the unfortunate recipient of that lofted pass. The second that the ball hit Bush's hands, Brown came flying in at top speed and crunched him onto the turf, popping the ball straight out of his hands. It might not happen all that often, but this was one of those hits that you could absolutely feel through your screen when you watched it back. It's no wonder Reggie needed some time to get back onto his feet. Anquan Bolden takes life-changing hit. Thankfully, Reggie popped back up once he caught his breath. However, when Eric Smith laid a crushing blow on Anquan Bolden, it didn't have a happy ending. Bolden was running a seam route down the middle of the field when Kurt Warner tossed the ball a little high to try and fit it between multiple defenders in the end zone. Bolden wasn't shying away from a contested jump ball. The problem was that the ball was directly in line with Smith. Smith was running at full speed to break the pass up and smashed into Bolden the second the ball came into the area. It wasn't just a regular hit either. It is one of the worst helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits that I've ever seen. The second the contact was made, Bolden dropped to the ground and didn't move for a while. He had to get carried off on a stretcher and taken to a local hospital. It was later determined that he had fractured bones in his face. He required seven plates and 40 screws to fix everything. But of course, we can't just talk about the bad, as Bolden did recover nicely and continued his playing career, even though it was a horrific injury and hit. In fact, Smith called Bolden to apologize for the hit, and Bolden not only accepted the apology, but gave him a strong motivational talk afterward on how he should just keep playing and preparing the way he always has. Not only was it a shocking hit, it was also a shocking moment for Smith when Bolden didn't hold anything against him. Sean Taylor doesn't care that it's the Pro Bowl. Now we get to what is likely the most shocking and surprising hit of all time. Let's set the scene. It was the Pro Bowl, the classic AFC versus NFC matchup. Don't worry though, this isn't your modern day Pro Bowl. This was when the game was still respected by both the players and fans. It was late in the third quarter and the AFC had to punt on a fourth and long. Instead, they wanted to run a trick play and fake the punt, using the punter to actually run for the first down rather than pass. He got about a yard or two away from the first down marker, and that was when disaster struck. Legendary safety Sean Taylor wanted none of this fake punt and brutalized punter Brian Mormon in the open field. Even watching it today, I'm bewildered at the physicality of the Pro Bowl compared to what we have today. Nevertheless, Taylor wanted to set the tone down the stretch of the game, and he certainly did just that. 
To be honest with you, it's also unreal how Mormon got up so quickly. If a punter was hit like this today, he'd be out for the season. Somehow, Mormon bounced up immediately and walked off the field, but I bet he wasn't feeling good, that's for sure. Jack Tatum, the Assassin Sean Taylor was known for his incredible power. Another man who was known for that same thing was Jack Tatum. Funny enough, if it wasn't for Jack Tatum, the league might have wound up to be a lot different. He was nicknamed the Assassin, and for a good reason. Because if you were coming over the middle of the field, there was a 90% chance that he'd lay you out onto the turf. This is just one example of his crushing power, and it comes at the expense of receiver Sammy White. White hauls in a deep pass in the middle of the field, and almost in the blink of an eye, Tatum drops him instantly. The hit was so hard that White's helmet flew off his head, and he just laid on the ground, looking down for a while before getting helped back up. I don't know about you guys, but I would be terrified if I had to suit up for a game as a receiver or running back and know that a man nicknamed the Assassin was on the other side. I'd be taking a sick day. Sammy White was probably thinking the same thing after this play. Chad Johnson wasn't ready. I'd prepare yourselves for this next one because it's something that Chad Johnson, otherwise known as Chad Ochocinco, didn't do. In a game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns, Cincinnati was dominating. These division rivalries always get the most intensity and hatred out of one another, and a blowout really stirs the pot even further. Cincinnati threw a slant to Chad with just over two minutes remaining, and it got jumped for an interception. Nothing too bad, right? Well, the safety had enough of Ochocinco over the middle of the field and blasted him so hard that his helmet launched off his head and he laid on the ground for quite some time. The next time he was seen after he got up, he was wiping away the blood from his cheek due to the hit. If you were watching this game on television when this took place, you were probably just as surprised as we are now. I mean, the guy just got rocked and the ball was basically already intercepted at that point. Dallas Clark writhes in pain. Moving on, we have the time that Dallas Clark was left sprawled out on the ground with tears coming into his eyes. This isn't a dig at Clark either. It was just that the hit was so devastating that he had no other option at the time. The hit was delivered by Tenard Jackson in a battle between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Indianapolis Colts. Clark was running something like a seam route down the field and when the ball came his way, Jackson wanted to ensure that he couldn't complete the catch and keep the chains moving. So what did he do? He crunched Clark up high and knocked the ball cleanly away. But you know what made this play 10 times worse? Jackson got back onto his feet and just stepped on the face of Clark when he was still on the ground before celebrating over top of him. When you watch the replay, you can visually see Clark writhing in pain on the ground because it was such a big hit. The biggest blows are usually the ones where you don't even see the defenders on screen until they've laid out an opponent. Clark probably had no idea Jackson was even that close, and he found out the hard way. Patrick Willis nearly knocks out Brad Smith It was only a matter of time before we got to a hit by Patrick Willis, the unbelievable San Francisco 49ers linebacker. The 49ers were beating the New York Jets by 10 points at this stage in the game, and there were just a little over two minutes left. New York was going fast to try and get the score closer, and Willis wanted to respond with a little speed of his own. Receiver Brad Smith caught a crossing route in the middle of the field and turned up the field to face Willis, who levels him straight away. When you watch this hit for the first time, it genuinely looked like Willis knocked Smith out cold for a solid few seconds before he regained consciousness and sprung back up. Smith's entire body just kind of laid limp for a moment and fell backward onto another 49ers defender who essentially stopped him from slamming his head back onto the ground. Even though he stopped that, the fact that he was behind Smith at the time of the hit caused him to get crunched with his leg stuck underneath the other defender. A few seconds after Smith popped back up and began walking off, he stumbled a bit and went back down onto one knee where he was further helped by teammates and staff members. I give this man a ton of credit for taking a hit from Willis like that and trying to walk it off. What a brutal hit! 
Joe Montana takes worst hit of his career. Let's stick with the 49ers here for another big hit, because the one Leonard Marshall laid on Joe Montana had the entire fan base worried for the future. Montana created some extra space and time when there seemingly was none on this play against the New York Giants, and eventually that time ran out. He had to launch the ball downfield, but it was just too late. Marshall was running after him from behind and smashed into him when Montana wasn't looking prepared for it. Of course, Marshall is a very large defensive lineman, so his falling on top of Montana after the hit probably made it a whole lot worse. Now, this hit gets more shocking because of the things that were reportedly said on the sidelines and such. Montana said that he felt like he was going to die after taking this hit, and that when he got asked by the trainers what was ailing him, he responded by saying that everything hurt. It might not look as vicious as some of the other hits we've shown, though it shocked Montana enough to warrant this kind of reaction to it. Chris Henry chose the wrong lane. It's a tad bit surprising that we haven't gotten a kickoff hit in this video, so let's change that. The Colts were kicking off to their division rivals, the Tennessee Titans. Return man Chris Henry liked what he saw from the ball placement and the blocking, so he made a decision to take it out and try to bring this all the way in the other direction. He probably should have just chosen any other option. As he ran up the middle of the field, somebody apparently forgot to block Daryl Reed, and the two met for a big collision. A collision that practically took Henry off his feet and slammed onto his neck. And it's only a miracle that his helmet stayed on his head throughout the encounter. The hit was so loud that even the commentators couldn't help but express their own emotions on the hit. I know Henry didn't have much of a choice on the return given that it wasn't in the end zone, but man, running to either the left or right could have saved him a big headache. And I mean that quite literally here. Deshaun Goldson sniffed this one out. The next hit comes from another former 49er player. This time, it was Deshaun Goldson who woke up and decided that he wanted to ruin someone else's day on the football field. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were trying to pick up a first down and sent a slant over the middle of the field, which Goldson recognized immediately. Unfortunately, receiver Mike Williams didn't see Goldson anywhere near him and was solely focused on catching this ball. When Goldson got his big head start, he collided hard with Williams and launched the ball in the complete opposite direction. It was a hit that made the entire stadium openly react to it. It's insane how you can audibly hear everybody think the exact same thing together with one another. However, this hit arguably isn't even the worst part of Williams' day. Do you know why? Because the Buccaneers were losing this game 34-3 at the time of the hit. San Francisco was blowing the doors off the Buccaneers, and to make matters worse, Williams got a devastating hit from Goldson. Ray Lewis gives stern warning to Amard Hall. And of course, we couldn't end without showing a hit from the great Ray Lewis. The Baltimore Ravens linebacker saw the check down pass and sprinted his way over to the sidelines to try and prevent a first down while Amard Hall, the receiver of this pass, still managed to pick up the first down, he was likely thinking to himself how much better it could have been if he had just run out of bounds a few yards earlier. Instead, he got the first and was hit so hard and so high by Lewis that he left the ground and his helmet flew off his head. Lewis was also right over the top of him while he was still on the turf and clapped to let him know that he wasn't going to let him get anything easy when he was out there. There's a long list of defenders that I wouldn't want to meet in the open field, and Ray Lewis has got to be incredibly high up there. You never want to see a linebacker with this type of stopping power greet you with the ball when he's had a running start at you. Nine times out of ten, you lose that battle.